Well, I just, I think the world of Carol, she's been an uh, enthusiastic person coming to our meetings uh, for, did you join in, in, I know we had a couple of meetings in Pflugerville and other places, you probably, were the first meetings you came to at the church? Yeah, at, at the church. And uh, she's volunteered very uh, several times to, to help us. So we were standing out in the parking lot at the last, um, you know, the photo critique and oh gosh, we don't, we don't have a meeting, a topic on the, oh, what are we gonna have? And Carol, uh, did someone ask you or did I'll let us know? <laughs> um, I don't remember, we were just kind of discussing it. And I said, well, you know, if you want, want me to do something on NFTs eventually, you know, just let me know. And someone said, can you do it next time? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Josh, uh, where's Josh? He said he'd love to be here and, and be part of the discussion. Um, so, he, but he thank you. He has a shoot tonight. He what? He has a shoot tonight. So he oh, said he couldn't be here, but he professional. Looked, yeah, he looked over the slides and, and we, we collaborated. So this is actually a sort of a collab. Oh, then I take everything bad that I even thought. <laughs> um, so Carol is, uh, has many, many uh, gallery showings to her credit. Uh, I included some of uh, that in her uh, email announcement. And if she wants to take any more time to introduce what she uh, has, marvelous pictures of Japan, China, I've, I think um, many other places, Iceland, her um, ice pictures. And one of the programs which most impressed me, in addition to the judging that she does, she always puts emphasis on the artistic intent or statement of the, of the photographer. To her, it's not just a a sharp picture or a composition picture. It's got um, much more to say. The more that the artist, the photographer can plan and think about that as to what their photography says, how other people might look at it. That's always um, a step above for me. And so I'm still just trying to focus. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, Carol, are you ready? You want to introduce any more? You take it away? No, I'm 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 already. I am gonna try to share my screen because um, I yes. have a presentation, and I'm and unfortunately I may have to turn my video off. Um, we'll see how it goes because sometimes the things are incompatible. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully, I, I I will. Hopefully, we can get this to work, and I will be able to. Um, and you'll still be able to see me. Hopefully, let's see if I can share. You're coming through loud and clear. You've got a great connection and I know you're out in the country. So, so far yeah. you're doing fine. So hopefully, I think this will work. Hopefully, can you all see my screen? We can, full screen, <coughs> excellent, okay. excellent. Awesome. So this is really, I don't really wanna to spend too much time talking about me. Um, you can all look at my website, it's Carol's Little World. And for those of you who know, shh, keep it quiet for now, a little, little secret I'll let you in on. My blog has been resurrected. Um, oh. I will go into this briefly, but for those of you who know me, my after 20 years of blogging, my blog was deleted for some random reason. They didn't bother to tell me. And I applied to get it back. I said, hey, Google, why did you delete me? And there was a big, you know, they sort of said, no, 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 no. And then they said, yes. So it's kind of back again. I am going to move it at some point. But for those of you who were following my opportunity weekends and things, my blog is back again. Um, I'm not, I'm going to actually roll out a new one and have a big announcement at some point, but until then, just know that if, if you want to check it out, it's back again. Um, I was an award-winning blogger and then they deleted my blog. Anyway, I won't go on about that, but this is all about exciting stuff. I'm really excited to be in the NFT space. And um, I just want you to know that I am not an expert in NFTs. Um, I've started in the NFT space in January. Having said that, NFTs move really fast. A month in NFT land is like six years in a gallery exhibit. Um, so this is a little bit about what NFTs are, how to get into the NFT space, how to kind of be part of the community and just a big introduction for folks. Um, it's not meant as a be all end all, rather just as sort of an intro. If you're thinking about NFTs or maybe you started with NFTs and you don't know where, where to go, what to do next, maybe this will help you out. If you don't know what an NFT is, we'll talk about that too. So don't panic. Um, so really what I wanted to talk about was uh, what is Web 3.0? 
Um, and that ties in with the NFT space. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll see more as I, as I go. Uh, what is an NFT? Uh, for those of you who are selling them, maybe you're making them, minting them already, you may know. For those of you who this is all new, we'll go into what it is. Um, how can I make my photos into NFTs? And how can I sell or buy NFTs? So I mentioned I'm, I'm now in the NFT space. Um, those of you who know me, I also have, I have a blog and I have a website, carolslittleworld.com. So web 2.0 is kind of like what we consider the internet, right? It, it, it's what we call web 2.0. So think about a website like Amazon, right? You can go to Amazon and you can buy socks or you can buy a hard drive or you can maybe even buy a photo or camera on Amazon, right? So you go to amazon.com and you say camera and a camera comes up and you click buy and it's a website and it's how you communicate with the, the world and it's how you buy something or view information, right? And usually the way this works is you find new websites by going to a search engine like say a Google or Bing or Yahoo, <laughs> whatever one you use. Right, and then you will go into Google maybe and say, hey, I need, new, I need a new camera, right? And then I'll come up with websites that list, that sell cameras and you click on them. And so um, this really favors larger companies and it's very centralized, right? Because if you're listed on Google, you'll get the traffic, right? Whereas if you're small, if you're like a tiny camera seller, manufacturer, whatever, you're not gonna get people coming to your website, right? So there's some flaws with this existing model, but though it's maybe flawed, it's what we're used to, right? It's kind of the internet, the way we're kind of used to, right? So hopefully everybody, this isn't anything new. Um, this is what we're used to, right? So that's what we call web 2.0. So now what is web 3.0, right? Well, on web 3.0, everything is decentralized. Right? There's no central, there's no Google, there's no central place. It's, they're said to be um, a blockchain, right? And basically what that means is nobody has control of anything. Think of a blockchain as like a river. You just put stuff on the river and somebody else picks it up downstream and that's it. There's no control, it, it just flows. It just could perpetually flows. It's a chain of events that happen. Right. Another way to think of it is it's a digital ledger, right? So anybody can look at on the river, or on the ledger and see who's buying, who's selling, who's trading, right? There's no central authority. It's, it's really just open, right? So when you put something on the blockchain, you are said to have minted it. There's a lot of terminology in this space and oh boy, it can really get confusing at times. So part of this will be, I will try to introduce the terms and, and sort of, and I'll have terms at the end too that, you know, some of them are pretty funny, some of them are entertaining, some of them are just like, what, 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 why do they call it that? But basically, when you mint something, you put it on the blockchain, and then it's decentralized, so anybody can buy, sell, or trade it. And it's, this is the Web3 environment, right? So there's no Google, it's very different, there's no searching, there's no central authority that says, yes, you can really have a legitimate web page or there's no bank. There's no, I mean, it's, it's, you just put stuff out there and somebody else picks it up. Think of like a little basket on a river. You put something in and somebody else will come along and pick up your basket and then they have it. So unfortunately to really talk about NFTs, we have to talk a little bit about cryptocurrency. I am not a, I'm, I don't trade cryptocurrency. I'm an artist who makes and sells NFTs, but we need to go into what cryptocurrency is because it's, it's part of the NFT space. So cryptocurrency or just crypto is a digital asset designed to be a medium of exchange. You can think of it as money that's not tied to a country, right? It's actually maintained on the, it's like money that's on our little river it, with the baskets, right? It, it's, it's on the blockchain and it's not, again, the blockchain is decentralized. So in a, in a fiat currency, in our regular environment, like our money is controlled by the banks and the, and the government, right? So the government prints money and then we go to the bank and get it and it's all centralized, right? You can't print your own money. You, well, you can, but they would throw you in jail when they catch you. 
right? Um, so the blockchain is very different. It's the crypto is maintained separately. It's not run by a bank. It's not run by a government. It's just crypto. So the best way to think about crypto is it's sort of like a foreign currency, only it's not associated with a country. So let's dive into that a little bit. Like we were talking about um, Africa and Tuscany. Let's say you were gonna go to France. You're gonna go on a trip to France, right? So you wanna get some money because you wanna buy food when you're in France. Great, right? So in France, you will need euros, right? Because that's the currency there, right? So you might go to your local bank and say, hey, I'm going to France, I need some euros, but can you, hit, can you hook me up? And you would exchange your dollars for, your, for euros, right? And there's an exchange rate that determines how many dollars is a euro or how many euros is a dollar. And the bank will look that up, right? And say, okay, well, you know, it's 1.2 to one, or I'm, you know, I'm just making that up, um, but it's some number, right? And they'll say, okay, with, if you have $200, let's say you're gonna get this many euros. And of course the bank will take a little fee for exchanging the currency, right? Usually, right? So think of cryptocurrency the same exact way. Only the difference is instead of a euro or a dollar or you know a, a, an Icelandic krona or a Japanese yen, you're trading a currency that is not affiliated with a country, right? It's just on the blockchain. Okay. So a lot of people like stocks or bonds or whatever, they trade crypto, like that's their job. And, and crypto has wild swings. So a lot of people are making a lot of money trading crypto. It's a lot of younger people have started trading crypto and have quit their day jobs and they're just making money trading crypto. They can also lose. Yes, you can lose. <laughs> like anything else, like stocks, bonds, whatever, you can lose money, but you can also make money trading crypto, right? A lot of people who trade crypto will do what I call park the crypto in NFTs. And what I mean by that is if they, if they buy and sell and trade crypto and they make a bunch of money, they don't wanna convert the crypto back to dollars, right? Cause that's a longer process for them. So what they'll do is they'll buy NFTs and then they'll go back to trading crypto, right? So what happens is a lot of the people who are buying NFTs are actual crypto traders. So it's a little confusing because the, crypt, the, the NFT space has artists in it, it has photographers in it, it has crypto traders, it has um, you know, people looking to brand, people looking to do marketing. It, there's, there's this weird overlap of people that are in NFT space. And there's some people that are just doing crypto trading and they park their money in NFT. But because the crypto market is so fluctuates so much, the NFT market exploded. And because the NFT market exploded, a lot of people started buying, selling NFTs and making a lot of money on them. And then the people that started buying NFTs, people started selling NFTs, then started buying them. So there are many people who are both an artist and a collector in the NFT space. And it's a little different to think about than the 2.0 space, where if you put up a website, you sell things on the website, you're not usually buying other things, right? In the, in the NFT world, it's very different. There are artist collectors, it's very common because what's happened is the NFT space exploded so quickly that a lot of folks, and literally they became millionaires overnight. So now they're buying art because that's how they made their money. So that's a piece of it too. But there's also people who trade crypto that just buy NFTs and they're looking to park it. So sometimes they don't, you know, we fuss in, in our meetings about, you know, getting, we were talking about earlier, getting your corners and edges right and everything, you know, get a perfect image. Some people that are selling NFTs and, and buying, these people that are buying, they don't care. They just want, you know, to park their, their crypto until the market changes direction again, right? So it's, it's a little weird the way this is set up, right? Because sometimes people that buy just, when the price is cheap, they'll buy, they, they just look for whatever they can get their hands on, right? We try to make the best images we can. And I still do that, but just know that the market is filled with some people that are just randomly buying stuff because they have money to burn. And so it's just something to be aware of as you get into the NFT space that because of the crazy crypto market, some people will do that. 
Um, okay, so let's talk about, I haven't defined an NFT yet. So let's talk about what an NFT is. You got a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do you mind? Do we, should we interrupt you? Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay. sure. It's fine. You have to have cryptocurrency to buy NFTs? Or you have U.S. dollars and you buy an an object of art. Uh, so normally the NFT, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit. But what happens is you buy the NFT on off the blockchain, and so you have to have the crypto that is for that NFT. So when you mint an NFT, you associate it on the blockchain, and usually you do that in the currency of the blockchain, which I'll talk about it, but my the one I'm on is Ethereum, right? So you will have to have crypto. Now you don't have to trade crypto. What you can do is you can take right. a certain amount of money and, and buy crypto to, to start. And I'll walk you through the whole process. But basically okay. what happens is you, you start your crypto journey, right? And then you mint your NFTs. And then as you sell them, you get more crypto. Now you can take that crypto and convert it back to dollars or like everyone, you know, like a lot of people do, you can park it or you can buy more art, you know? So like you can sell a hundred dollars, a hundred ETH of something. Well, if you can sell a hundred ETH um, and then buy like $80, 80 ETH worth of art, but then keep 20 and cash out, right? So I'll, I'll go over all the, the process. Right, okay, you got that clear. Now let's see, what is an F NFT? Okay, so NFT, it's a real catchy phrase. I know non-fungible token, it sounds like a mushroom. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Basically what an NFT is, it's a certificate. It's a certificate of authenticity that identifies something as a unique digital or physical asset. And this is important to note. Remember I said digital or physical, it could be digital and physical. So if you are a photographer, you can make an NFT, you can sell like a JPEG as an NFT, like that would be an NFT. You could also sell a JPEG with a print, right? You can say, buy this NFT and you get a JPEG of my work and you get a print, a framed print, right? So I hear people say all the time incorrectly, like, oh, NFTs don't exist. They're just vaporware. That is simply not true. Um, NFTs can be physical. As of now, um, you can actually, there, there are people that are using this to underwrite mortgages, right? So if you buy a house with, as an NFT, it's a physical thing. You can live in the house. You can go knock on the door, right? It's, it doesn't exist just in the ether. It's a physical thing. Right, so understand that. But what the NFT actually is, is it's a certificate saying this thing is tied, you know, this certificate certifies that this thing exists and it's tied to this physical thing that exists on the blockchain. Okay, so it's a unique asset. So a lot of times as the NFTs are collectibles. And when I say collectible, it doesn't have to just be art. It can be art, it can be photography, it can be music. It can be a game. It can be a web 2.0 website. It can be anything that you know is a is a physical or digital asset that you can mint and put on the blockchain. And basically, what you do when you mint an NFT, like if I were to take a photo, let's say I have a I have a bottle of water here. Let's say I take a photo of this bottle of water. Right now, I have a photo of my bottle of water. It's a JPEG. I mint it. I put it on the blockchain. I certify that this bottle, this photo of this bottle of water now is an NFT, right? I can buy, sell, trade that NFT. And it's a, it comes with a certificate saying, this is my unique photograph. This is my collectible, right? This is my, you know, this is my photograph of my bottle of water. And once you mint something, an NFT, and put it on the blockchain, you can auction it you can trade it, you can give it away, okay? So most NFTs are sold at auction. So a lot of times what happens is you will, you will set, and, and just like there are many different types of auctions, and I won't go into all of it because this is really complex, and I don't want to hit you with everything at once. 
but there's like Dutch auctions, there's different types of auctions, but usually you set a floor price, meaning that's the, the price you wanna sell it at. And there can be bidding wars. So you may say like, I wanna sell my bottle of water for one E, right? Okay, let's say two or three people come along and say, I want that bottle of water. They can bid and outbid and bid each other. And the one ETH may turn into 500 ETH. Well, probably not, that's a lot of money, but you know, more than one ETH, it's possible, right? Likewise, it can go the other way. You can say, I wanna sell this bottle of water photo for one ETH. And somebody may say, well, you know, I like it, but I'm not really that big a fan of bottled water. If it was a Coke, I'd give you more money, but how about if I give you like 0.8 ETH? And then you can decide like, okay, yes, I'll take your bid. Or you can say, no, I'm gonna hold out and wait for my one ETH because I think I'm gonna get that much money. So know that it's an auction, but what you're auctioning off is whatever you minted. Okay, so you can mint just a JPEG. You can mint a JPEG with a print. Some people have minted like books of their work. Another thing you can do is you can mint additions, right? So you can have 10 photos. And what a lot of people do is they'll say, when I sell 10 photos, when I auction 10 photos, I'm gonna raffle a print to one of the winners, right? <laughs> so they have a chance at winning. So they get one JPEG, but they have a chance at winning a print, right? Um, there's lots of things you can do and people are getting very creative with what they're auctioning, what they're minting. And like I said, there's music too. A lot of people are putting music on the blockchain. So it could be a song, it could be poetry, it could be a movie. Um, it doesn't have to be a photograph. Most, a lot of NFTs are art and photography, but not all. Question again, yes. Um, uh, the distinction between NFT and copyright, please. Aha, okay, that's a good question. So it, it, think of an NFT as buying like a print, right? You don't get the copyright to the image. Now I'm gonna put a pin in that, right? Normally you don't get the copyright. You get like, it's just as if you put your, your work in a magazine, right? They get first publication rights, but they don't own the image, right? So you can do it again and again. So if you mint an NFT under normal circumstances and you auction it off, the person buying it does not get the copyright. They get the, the, the JPEG or the print or whatever you minted in the NFT. Now I'm going to give you, remember I said, put a pin in it. There are people that are saying, hey, you know, I actually sell stock photography and it's really stupid for me to sell stock photography and NFTs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mint my stock photography. So I'm going to mint, I'm gonna put on the blockchain as a corporation, if you buy this NFT, you get to use you get to you know use this in an ad. You get full rights to this thing, right? So it really depends on what you put on the blockchain as to what you you get. You can put all copyright on the blockchain if you want to do that. Normally, most people don't. They they retain the photographer retains the copyright to the work, and it's like one print that you're auctioning off. Does that answer your question? Okay, awesome. So if anybody else has any other questions, just pipe up. <laughs> so, okay, so now we know what an NFT is, right? Remember I said you, you photograph the, the, I'm gonna try to put, you, you take your bottle of water photo and you put it on the blockchain, you mint it, you put it on the blockchain, you set an auction for it, right? And that's how this whole thing works, right? So there's different blockchains, of course, because it's decentralized, anybody can like make their own, right? So some of the popular cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin, you might've heard of. The biggest, I would, I, I will arguably, I will say the biggest blockchain, the most popular blockchain for photo NFTs is called Ethereum. It's also called ETH, it's also called E. Um, you will see people instead of like US dollar, they'll say one E, one E, one Ethereum. <laughs> a lot of times people don't use the full word Ethereum, they say E. And you'll and hear I, people, and I lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's all money, yeah. So a lot of times people will call it ETH. So you hear people say ETH. What that is, is that's Ethereum, right? So normally you mint your NFT, you put it on the blockchain and you auction it for ETH. On the, in the currency of the blockchain. 
there are some other blockchains. There's um, Te Tezos is another one. Um, there's different ones, but basically ETH is the most, I would say the most common one. And basically, as I mentioned, you set the price for the auction. So you can set the price at any, any point you want. So let's talk about, um, so, so another thing is some people say, well, there's no money in, in NFTs, right? I've heard people say that, right? So there's a company called Yuga Labs that made a series of NFTs called the Bored Apes, the Bored Ape Yacht Club. The Bored Ape Yacht Club is probably arguably the most influential art movement this century. Um, honestly, I'm not exaggerating. The Bored Apes, a bunch of Bored Apes sold at South of these at auction for $24.39 million. That's a lot of money. In under one year, in less than six months, Yuga Labs has grown to be a $4 billion company. It is now worth more money than Wendy's and JCPenney. The board apes are being used to market um, Nike sneakers. They're making a coffee brand. They're making um, uh, burgers. I saw board ape burgers recently. Um, the board apes have influenced design in a way that's not even, even if you have never seen a board ape, the board apes are going to influence design, marketing, and advertising for a long time because of the success of the Board Ape Yacht Club. The apes or B-A-Y-C or Board Apes as people call them or the Board Ape Yacht Club. Um, they're just phenomenal. I, I'm not a huge fan of the apes. I have to say, I don't think it's the best design I've ever seen, but they become so insanely popular that the palette of the apes is now being used on websites and in advertising. It, it, is, it is just touching us it's hitting us in ways, even if you, some of you are saying, I've never heard this ape thing. What are you talking about? You will see them and you will see them again. And once you see one, you'll be like, oh yeah, I've seen that thing. You know, they're everywhere. And there will be more places because of the huge success of the apes. Um, know that everyone will start using them in ads. You're gonna see apes everywhere. Um, for the next few years, there's, everything's gonna be an ape. I mean, I, I just have to say it, it is apes are everywhere. Um, it is probably the, the most famous NFT and one of the most, um, really the fastest growing company we've ever had. To give you an idea, I think someone said it took 12 years for Amazon to get to the size that Yuga Labs is now. And they did it in one year. It's fast. I mean, they're, they're not just the fastest growing company, but it's by far, they've exploded. Um, it's a huge phenomenon, the apes. Um, it's, it's influencing what music, language. I mean, and a lot of people don't know who they are. They, if they're not following NFTs, they've, they've not seen them. When you see one, you might go, oh yeah, I've seen that thing. But really it's only the start of the ape movement. Um, like them or hate them, they're gonna be a big influence. Um, the color palettes, the design of them, the, the attitude of the, it, it's, it's just a big, big thing and it's getting bigger. And the more people hear about them, the more, the more they keep selling for more and more money. Um, and so the price keeps running up and the more the price runs up, the more people go, wow, I can't believe these things are so insanely popular. And it, you know, it's like the pet rock on steroids somehow. I don't know how it's blown up, but it did. So I would say the apes are probably one of the most famous um, NFTs. There's also an artist called Beeple. Beeple is, I wanna call him a photographic artist. He does a lot of compositing. Um, he's primarily a photographic artist, but I think he does a little bit of digital art. He sold uh, one NFT for $6.6 .6 million at Christie's at, within an auction. Um, he's doing a project with Madonna. Um, the singer. I think it just dropped recently um, and it's going to be another big um, expensive, you know, NFT. Um, big, 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 you know, artists in this space. Um, it's really interesting because I think he's probably the most prevalent photographer 
in a space because the apes are not really photographers. They're more, they're more illustrated, right? Um, although they're impacting everything. So another big thing to know about NFTs, and this is probably one of the things I am the most excited about, apart from the community. Um, when you auction an NFT, you can associate a royalty with the NFT so that when the person buys your NFT, if they resell it, you get a percentage of the sale every time it gets sold. Um, this is really a big, big thing for photographers because think about in the past when we sold a photo, if you sell the frame print, you would give it to somebody. And if they resold it, you didn't get anything. You just got, you know, maybe your name got a little more promoted, right? Now you actually get money, right? Um, and so this can actually become a revenue stream, much like music. If you, if you think about music, there's songs like say White Christmas, right? Where if you listen to White Christmas, every time it plays on the radio, the, the songwriter gets a penny or some ridiculous thing, right? So it ended up being the most the largest grossing song in history or something, right? Because it gets played all the time and, the, and you get royalties all the time every time it gets played. With photographers, we never had access to royalties really. It was difficult, right? We could try to sell one image over and over again, but those were each unique sales, not really royalties, right? With this, now we can actually associate a royalty with a photograph. And so as, remember I talked about these crypto people buy, sell, trade a lot of crypto and they park money and they buy, sell, trade NFT. That actually allows us to cash in and get royalties. And every time the price goes up, we also get you know, the royalties from, from the sales and, and whatnot. Right? So that can over long-term, that can be a really big um, revenue stream for artists and photographers. So that's something that I'm watching very closely and I've associated royalties with all of my work that is in NFT uh, for that reason. Cause I think long-term it's really a great, um, cause if you think about the NFT space, it's really very new. It's only been around you know, a couple of years at the most and it's really only become popular the last year or two. It's probably gonna be around for decades, right? So those royalties will stack up. Yes, question. Uh <clears throat> I'm just following the chat room and Charles has a question saying what happens to an NFT if it represents a physical object and the object is destroyed? He's trying well, to trick you up. Yeah, it's it, so what happens is it's remember it's decentralized, right? So it, every auction is really just someone buying and someone selling, right? So once you like if it's a print once you buy it and sell it, you don't own a print anymore, right? And a person owns it. And if it gets destroyed, it, it, it does, you know, it's gone. So um, that's how it works. Now, can the blockchain go down? Um, I guess we, we actually had an incident where OpenSea was hacked and crashed. Um, and so what happens when you mint, you actually get a contract. And so the contract can, can be restored in some cases, but some cases not. Um, there's also been, I talked about the apes, there's, because the apes are so popular, there's been people trying to steal them. And once you steal them, it, it's not like a bank. If someone steals your ATM card, you go to the bank and say, hey, someone stole my ATM card and you're only liable for a certain amount of money, right? The, the bank will fight to get your money back. Or if you rob a bank, you go to jail typically if they catch you, right? So you might make away with the money, but the people who invested in the bank of, of accounts, they still have their money there, right? So it's very different, right? Because it's, it's decentralized. There's no police. There's no one helping you. It's all, it's, it's very much the wild west. <laughs> so know that as things go wrong and people get hacked and whatnot, there's no recourse. Uh, it is this something to be aware of? It is very, it, it is very prone to fluctuations. The currency goes up and down very much. The Ethereum price goes crazy. The fee price goes crazy. And if you get hacked or something, there's no recourse. So it is, your, I really feel like I'm in a wild wallet. mess. Sorry, go ahead. That's a, that is your wallet or your contract. You, can, you can't print it out. It's usually, it's a, uh, the blockchain is a mathematical, very complex mathematical code attached to it. 
I get. And Ethereum is generated using Ethereum algorithms. Mm -hmm. But so you're saying it's pretty permanent, except there have been incidences where it was hacked. Or and yes. again, if the if you own the NFT and you give the uh, and someone buys it from you, but you also have to follow through and send them a print, right? And they have to take possession of a physical object, and they might lose it in a fire, but yes. they still have the they still have the NFT. They still have the NFT, yes. And you don't have to put a print; you can just sell it JPEG if that's what you want to do. Got it's it. whatever you put on. Now, what happens is I'll go into this a little bit too. But basically, in order to buy, sell, trade, you have something called the digital wallet, right? And that's the thing that holds your Ethereum. Now, you can actually also buy something like a physical wallet that's a, a hardware wallet that what it is is you plug it into your computer and you put your NFTs on it and then you unplug it. And you can go put it in like a safe deposit box. And that's what people do like if they buy an ape, right? Because you don't want to sit there with a million dollars that someone could steal your ape, right? But there's been all kinds, like there's a scam going around and this is really interesting, right? I, I was fascinated, but I'm, I'm going to go into this for a second. It's really interesting. Somebody called somebody on the phone and said, hi, we're calling from DirecTV. We need to like reset your internet connection. Uh, we're going to send you a link. Can you type in your password, right, for your router? And they thought it was really DirecTV. So they typed in their password, right? They got the router. Then they hacked into their um, digital wallet. Then they got their NFTs. Right, um, because they actually didn't. I mean, it's it's what you can do, right? Because someone can, you know, break into your house and steal them. Because like, these apes are worth so much money that people are getting really creative. <laughs> to you know, they want those apes and they want to steal those apes. So they're getting really creative. They're going on great scams, right? To get get those get get these very valuable NFTs. And so, it's turning into you know you have to be really careful. With your NFTs, if you if you collect them and you get some really expensive ones, you got to watch it because there are people that are getting very creative about you know as soon as people make a lot of money, there are crooks that come along and try to steal a lot of money, right? Unfortunately, um, and so you really have to watch. Um, it's and it, and it is really the wild west. It, it moves very fast. It's crazy wild west, and it's very prone to swings. I mean, I, I will say that it, it it can be difficult if you're not you know, used to it. But I will say this also, it is the be it is one of the better communities I've ever been in. The artists are amazing. I'm connecting with artists from around the world and it's great to see um, the artists that, that are there. Um, just this last week they had, um, it was called Namaste NFT and it was a big conference in India and many NFT artists and photographers flew over to India and they all met each other in person. And it's, it's that kind of community. I'm, I'm getting to know people that are photographers from all around the world. Um, and it's, it's really just amazing as I connect with people and talk to people and share photographs and work with people, I'm get, really getting to see amazing work that's been done around the world. Um, and just artists from everywhere. Um, and the sharing that goes on, the, the camaraderie, just the community is astounding to me. And that's one of the reasons that's drawing me into the NFT space because it is really oh, is a community. Go ahead, sorry. Carol, I have a question. So I, please shed some light on this. Uh, as a photographer, I can <laughs> take a print and I can bring it to a gallery and sell it to the gallery and <laughs> let them make the commission or whatever. Uh, it's a done deal. Uh, the person that buys it uh, can hang it on the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The NFT equivalent, I can post my, uh, I can mint my print mm -hmm. uh, on, on the uh, on, on Web3. Yes. And somebody buys it and hangs it on the wall. Uh, Yes, there is subtle, subtle differences, but why is it so, uh, why is it catching so much in, nowadays? Because of those bored apes. <laughs> there, there's a guy, um, there's a guy called Drifter Shots who um, photographs his feet hanging off a building. Like he climbs up to places and he photographs his feet. He's a photographer. His, some of his photos have sold for like 30 e. Right, so look at the price of Ethereum 
and multiply it by 30. And that's what someone is selling a photograph for. That's a lot of money. Okay. Right. So there's there. The thing is, artists tend to go where the money is, right? I was talking to someone, I, I have a couple of friends, right? Who do this too. And one of my friends was saying, you know, I live in a crappy house, a two bedroom apartment. I drive an old like Honda and I sold $86,000 worth of JPEGs before breakfast. You know, this is literally his quote, right? He, he's selling that much in, in JPEGs. And, in and that's, could it be that those people want to store, they want to, lot, is, is Ethereum less volatile than say Bitcoin? Bitcoin no, 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 it's even more volatile. It, even it's, more volatile, okay. Yes. It's actually changing because the reason is so many artists have started going to the NFT space that it's making Ethereum be a little bit more stable. Now, having said that, there have been major crashes um, and it is very volatile. It is much more volatile than, than other, you know, other, like, it's way more volatile than stocks. But Carol, I want yeah. to- Oh, yeah, okay. Carol, the, yes. the, reason, the reason they're using in, uh, in, NFT is the uh, infrastructure, it's a platform that NFT was written on. Yeah, yeah. But it, the reason it, people are drawn to it is because stuff is selling, right? And, and it's make, a lot of people are hearing yeah, you can make money in NFTs and it's drawing more artists. Another thing to be aware of, right? Think of it this way. This is very critical because we, we're in the United, at least I think all of us are in the US. I don't know if anyone here is, is from outside of the US right now. We're in the United States. Our currency is the US dollar. It's a fiat currency. It's backed by the US government, the US mint and treasury, right? Our currency is very, very stable, right? So think about the US dollar, it's really very stable. Yeah, some people will claim we're printing too much money, whatever, politics, I'm not gonna get into politics, but our currency over time has been very stable. You're in the UK, the pound sterling is very, very stable. That's why when they had the Euro, the, the British didn't go into the Euro, they didn't convert their currency, right? Why? Because their currency was really super stable, right? They didn't want to move to a new, new currency that was more risky, right? Why? Right. Think about the world, though. Someone here is going to Nigeria, right? Africa, some African countries, right? They do not have stable currencies, right? Ethereum is, Bitcoin is way more stable than their currency, right? There are countries like um, Venezuela, Nicaragua and El Salvador right now that they're using Bitcoin a lot. Why? Well, their currency is not as stable. Right, Bitcoin is more stable than their currency. So it's actually an improvement for them to move to, the, the blockchains are more stable than their native, than their fiat currency, right? So there's an incentive for people in these countries to actually move into the blockchains, right? So we tend to think of it as, well, it, why would we go to this Ethereum? It's wild, it's swinging, it's, it's very fluid. I could lose my shirt on it. Think about it the other way for some, because it's a global thing, right? So some, there are some countries where people are, it's the opposite, it's more stable for them. They're getting stability by going to the blockchain, right? And over time, what'll happen is the, some of the blockchains will emerge, right? I think Bitcoin is probably here to stay. I think maybe Ethereum is here to stay, right? Some of them may disappear. Some of them may fold in, some of them may just vaporize, right? That's how it's gonna work. Um, but know that what's happening is because of the NFT space, because of the popularity of NFTs, because there's so many people moving into the NFT space that, that the buyers are there. And then when the buyers come, the sellers come, right? Because they know, they hear people. And that's why I got on it. I heard there's a lot of people who are selling NFTs. Like, okay, let me try to sell, right? That gets more people to sell and then more people buy and it's, it's, it feeds itself. And then, like I was saying earlier, when you start to make money and you start to sell your work, a lot of people will then turn around and buy other work. I've heard many times in the NFT community, they say, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? So there's really that sense of camaraderie in the NFT space. A lot of people want to see everybody succeed. And there's something called WAG ME. I'll talk about that. It's, but the, the acronym is we're all going to make it. Right, because everybody's selling a lot of work. And I've, and I've even spoken to some artists, like I spoke to an artist this week. Before this year, he was maybe selling $12,000 worth of work a year. This year already in the NFTs, he sold 36,000, 
right? So he's not the people, he's not the board apes. He's not making 50 bazillion dollars, but he's making two, three times what he normally makes, right? Question, yeah, Clay. So uh, I, I uh, printed a, a picture of, of four tomatoes, the only tomatoes I was able to grow in my, in my garden a couple of years ago on a plate. Okay. And so uh -huh. it was a nice eight and a half, uh, eight by 10 picture. I exhibited it at the library mm -hmm. and we could, and we can do this uh, at the library. You can put a, 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 you know, you can put a price on it if you want, or sure. you can say not for sale. Well, I was so pleased. Uh, someone bought my picture. It's the first item I've ever sold. Um, and <laughs> so, but I wonder, I could print another one. Um, you know, put up it. You know, as she liked. Or I could sell it. You know, or I could print it up in my uh, in my house, or I could make a hundred of them. I could do that with NFTs too, right? But then you don't have I to could, print it. No, you uh, don't have to print it. You can just sell a JPEG. Yeah, you're just digital. Yeah, it's just digital. digital. So I mean, does if you if you suddenly start selling, okay, you find out you've made a picture that's people like. Uh, in that sense, they like your picture or it's unique, and you sell one. So now you you create. 10 more of them as NFTs and try to auction them off. And the first buyer, uh, what's going to happen? They're going to sell theirs, maybe at a higher price along with your 10, or maybe the price will go down. Is that the risk that's just, but they're, they're, um, you can mint. So at, at least you're, I like the royalty idea. I didn't know about that. That's a unique yeah. feature that's that great. if that first person who buys it, the tomato picture, they sell it, they don't, I don't get anything. Uh, but um, so, yeah, is, how do you talk, how do you deal with uniqueness? And so, is there a promise not to do any more? Okay, you... so, so that's interesting. Okay, so one thing that happens is there's different types of NFTs, right? There's what they call in addition, or there's what they call a one-to-one, -one, right? a oh. one-off, right? So when you mint it, you can say, this is a one-off, right? And you only make one. Right. Or you can make an addition. You can say there's 10 of these. Right. And so what a lot of people do is they'll say, I'm making 10 of these and I'm offering it at one price. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say, you know, when they're gone, they're gone, you know, kind of thing. Right. Or you, mine are all one offs. Right. So right now, mine are all one offs. But I've done what's called a collection. Right. So this is going to confuse you even more. So think <laughs> of a collection as a body of work. Right, so like my collection, I think the one I shared was from New Orleans, right? Bourbon Street at night, right? So it's, I think six photos from New Orleans that are together, right? They're different photos and they're offered as a collection, right? So what I did was I auctioned off, I'm auctioning six photographs from New Orleans at night and they're all at the same price, right? But they're a collection. So what that means is I'm marketing them as one thing. Think of it as a show, right? When you do an exhibit, you might put 20 prints up on the wall. Each one is unique. Someone can, can come in and buy print number three, right? And again, each one is being sold differently. You can, you can because they're auctioned, right? Somebody can come in and say, I want number four and it could be a bidding war for number four and you could get four ETH for it. But maybe number five doesn't sell. Just like an art show, right? It's gonna be the same way, right? So know that that's the case. Now, if you do additions, Right? You can do additions and collections to confuse you even more, right? But in addition would mean there's like 10 of each one. Now, when it's sold out, it's sold out, right? So it's possible you have a collection of six images and there are three additions, let's say, right? So that means there's six images and each one has three. Again, it's possible that image number four, you sell all three and image number, six, uh, image number five, you don't sell any, right? No one buys it at auction, right? That's entirely possible. Right now, it's also possible. Let's say you have an let's say you have six images and they're in their additions, and you have three editions of each, right? Or let's make it easier. You have one image and you have an edition of ten. You sell two or three of them at auction, right? You have a royalty associated with them. The first one sells at auction to Fred. Let's just say Fred, right? Fred now re-auctions it right? Goes to a bidding or higher price, right? That doesn't impact you. You still get the royalties from that image. You can still sell your number two through 10 independently. They're separate auctions, 
know that it's decentralized, right? So what that means is his auction is separate from yours. So you can, so what a lot of people do is they set the price low if they wanna get royalties to encourage people to buy, sell, trade. And yes, it's entirely possible to have the same image being auctioned from somebody else and you're getting royalties from it, but also selling additional ones of your piece. If that make, hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing because there's the one-offs, the additions, the collections, the, you know, and auctions on top of it, right? But think of it that way. Everything is decentralized. So it's really whatever, whoever wants to buy, whoever wants to sell, it's open to, it's open for business. It's open to suggestions. That's how it works. So uh, again, the idea is that if, if, I become a fan of Carol Schiraldi photography and I start collecting your works at, at some point, you even continue to produce more work. You become famous uh, as, as, a, as you get a Met show in New York and then you die. <laughs> and, then you, and, then, and then I have your NFTs mine. And then now I can auction because you're a celebrity photographer. Is that the idea too? Yes, yes. That's the idea is as you get more collectors, your work will go up in value and then people will flip your work. There's also virtual galleries where people will display their NFTs. Like they'll make a mock-up room and they'll say, hey, here's all the cool NFTs I bought, right? Here's my apes, man, check out my apes. You know, and they kind of put them up, right? You know, so there's also what they call PFPs, which are profile pictures. So you can change your profile picture on Twitter to be your NFT. So a lot of people buy the apes and they change. So you see a lot of apes on Twitter, but it's just because, you know, someone bought an ape and they put up, you know, a, a, their photo, right? So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. It's really limited to, to what you, whatever you can auction off, whatever somebody's willing to buy. That's it. I mean, I, you know, I, I wish I could say, well, you, you just have to put a JPEG up and it sells for this much. There's no rules. It, it's really wild. So, um, but know that there's, you can get royalties. And what some people do is they, again, they lower that price. So they'll offer it really, really cheap, right? 0.005 ETH or something, right? One person said it to me really well. He said, I was in a space last week and he was talking about this. He said, you know, you put stuff up on Instagram, right? What do you get when you put something up on Instagram? Maybe you get a heart, maybe you get a like, people check out your work, right? You mm -hmm. could put stuff, instead of putting it on Instagram, put it up auction it at a really low price, like 0.001 ETH, 20 bucks or something, right? That's going to work out to even five bucks, 10 bucks, right? As you put everything up, you're, you're getting money instead of getting, instead of putting stuff on Instagram and them getting, and you just putting it for free, you get a little bit of money. Now your stuff may not all sell, your photos may not all sell, right? But think about what you could do instead of making Instagram Right? You could get a feed where you just keep posting NFTs every day and you offer them really low prices and you get you know five bucks every time you sell something. I mean, you know, you could you could micro price in, in essence, right? Because in theory, you know, there's a supply and demand, right? So when you lower the price, it, it, you, you, you're more likely to sell, right? So question, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and I don't want to take away from anybody no. else who wants to ask questions. Is there a commission? Uh, the wallet people are making a commission uh. and and, yes. Uh, it's <laughs> yes. not a, it's not an a frictionless a frictionless trade then. I guess. It's called a gas price. A That's price? another a gas price. Um, I think yeah. I have it in here. Um, yeah. We, but let me let me on. go through and, and we'll we'll get to the gas price. But basically, okay. the gas price is the fee. Remember, I said when you trade with the bank, they take a little fee. Oh. Right? There's a fee, and the fee is a gas price. So know that also gas price fluctuates almost as much, much as Ethereum. And so when gas is low, you'll hear a lot of people buying and selling. Also, you'll hear people say on Twitter, gas is low, buy now, you know, and everybody will start, you know, again, wild west, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, so you do have to pay gas prices, but know that um, if you lower your price enough, the gas price will be, not as great, you know, and, and if you sell when gas is low, it can work in your favor. Um, and you might not get rich, but you might get some money for your photographs, you know, and it really depends on your work and your community. 
right? How many people you get to follow you? And, and I'll talk a little bit about how to, how to sell. Um, Cause this is, this, it's, this is a whole new world. Um, know that this is, it's a little crazy, a whole new world. So let's talk a little about getting, you know, how do you get to be the next people, right? Well, NFTs are sold on a platform, right? There are several and they're always adding more. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, I've been, I've been joking about not having an invite to foundation, right? That's one of the platforms. And up until this week, you had to have be invited to be on foundation and you had to get an invite from another artist. And just yesterday, they announced that foundation is now open. Um, so you can just join. It. But there are several platforms. Um, I am on OpenSea, which um, they call themselves the world's first and largest NFT marketplace. Okay, whatever. It is open. You can just join OpenSea and start minting. Um, many Charles, not Charles asked a Charles, excuse me, Go asked ahead. about yeah. how, how do you how do you get a you have to have an Ethereum coin first? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Okay, so so the thing is, you want to first sort of pick a platform, right? Because remember, I mentioned Ethereum is the most common blockchain, but if you want to be on a different blockchain, if you want to be on a certain platform, they may have their own, they may have a different blockchain. So you have to make sure they go in combination, right? So if you want to be on OpenSea or, or Ethereum, right, um, you need to pick a platform that you're going to sell on, that you're going to sell your NFTs, right? And where you're going to mint, basically. And so think of it, that's where you're going to hold your auctions, right? Now, there's a catch, right? And this is where we get into the digital wallet. OpenSea requires that you connect to something called the digital wallet, right? We talked a little bit about this. Here's the official definition. A digital wallet is a software application or hardware device. Remember I said you could plug one into your computer used to store private keys to blockchain assets and accounts. Unlike a traditional wallet, a blockchain wallet does not actually contain the coins or tokens. Instead, it stores a private encryption key that provides ownership of a digital asset. So it stores a, a key that allows you to retrieve something off the blockchain. This is very confusing, I know, so I'm gonna take a pause. And if anybody has any questions, Speak up. <laughs> um, basically, you can think of your wallet as a thing that holds your ETH. But know that your wallet actually doesn't really hold, there's no such thing really as an ETH coin. You're not going to get a coin or a bill like money. When you go to the bank, you get dollar bills and coins and stuff, right? What you're getting here is an encryption key, right? And that will unlock the ETH that you have in your name. And it will also unlock your NFTs, right? So everything is connected to that wallet. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing. And this is one of those things when you start to do it, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. But to explain it is a little weird. And I don't wanna get into like the encryption algorithms and all of that. It gets really complex. Okay, so I apologize to everybody and to you now, Carol, but uh, what crypto algorithms are they using? Uh, I, I'm not. How you, big is the key? Yeah, you have to look it up. Um, okay. And the wallets are different. There are physical hardware wallets and also software wallets, right? So know that um, the most common wallet, like if you go to OpenSea, if you just go to OpenSea right now, they recommend some wallets that you can use, right? So those wallets are some examples, but you can use another wallet. Basically, what you do is you give um, OpenSea or your platform of choice, if you don't choose to sell on OpenSea, whatever one you choose, you give them the, the um, address of your wallet and say, here's my wallet. So you connect your wallet to OpenSea, right? Then what you do is then that connects your Ethereum, right, to, your, to the blockchain and the platform where you're going to mint, right? Then you use OpenSea to launch your auctions, Right, so opening this wallet is actually a bit trickier than it looks on TV. Here is one wallet as an example. That's a hardware wallet, mm -hmm. which I've had now for two years and I've never opened the box yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, so, okay, so the way that works, hang on, I'm gonna talk about that for a second. So the way a hardware wallet works is you would plug it into your computer. It's a hardware device. It's a physical device. He's got it, he's showing you one, right? 
you plug that in, it usually connects with USB, but it could also be, um, it could connect over Wi-Fi, oddly enough, or other Bluetooth, some of them, depending on the device that you buy. And what you do is you, you it will store your keys in there. And then when you're, when you're done, you unplug it and then it's not on the internet. So that makes it much safer because it, it, you can't steal something that's not, I mean, they could break into your house and steal it, but that's what they'd have to do, right? It's not connected to anything. So let's say you buy one of those really expensive apes. Um, you could download it onto that digital wallet, unplug it, right? And then no one can get to your ape, right? Your, your, your ape is safe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Carol? At me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, in, in regard to that, I'm a computer repair guy. And I remember a story uh, a couple of years ago, there was a guy that bought one of the very first Bitcoins and he forgot he had done it and he had it on a computer. And then the computer went to the landfill and then he realized it was worth like two and a half million dollars or some crazy thing like that. So he oh. paid a company to figure out about what depth it was, almost like archaeology. He paid them like fifty or sixty thousand dollars and they were actually able to retrieve it. But once they had it, then he didn't have the password. So now he's got all these guys trying to hack into that. So I'm just thinking about what could possibly go wrong. I'm not sure I'd be a big fan of anything that's a, a hardware device like that. So I will tell you one of the things that happened this year, right? right I, and again, I started selling NFTs. I started my whole NFT journey in January. So I'm new to this as well. But since I joined the NFT world, when you mint, remember I said you mint, you put something on the blockchain, right? What actually happens is you get a contract with like OpenSea. They give you a contract, right? And so you say, here's my contract. And, and your encryption keys are passed around in the contract and you get like an address of, you know, here's your minted piece, right? So I take my, bot again, I'm gonna take my bottle of water photo, I right? put it up, I get a contract from OpenSea. Um, I say, I'm auctioning this bottle of water photo for, you know, two ETH, right? What happened was somebody hacked all the contracts. And so that, that got, that's, they got fished and they got the contracts, replaced the contracts. So people thought they were minting and buying and selling and instead the contracts were going to like one guy. <laughs> So he was just like sucking up all the NFTs that were buying and selling and trading. And there's nothing you can do. Again, it's, it's, it re really is the wild, wild west, right? So, and, and it is, even with the hardware, there, there's, you know, like I said, there's someone who called and said, hey, we set your password. Can you type your password into this website? And they, 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 they hacked, right? So that, and people will do that if they think you have an ape, because these things have gone up from, you know, they're, they're $24 million. People will get very creative when they want 24 million bucks, believe me, I mean, this is what they do, right? So, so it is, <laughs> I don't want to scare people off. Um, most of the time, they're not going to hack you. It, it's a very great community, but know that some of this is going on and there are people who trade crypto like crazy, right? So it's a separate, it, it is like an overlap of that space, right? But I don't want to go into too much depth about this. I just want you to think of a wallet as a place that holds your ETH and your currency and your certificates for your NFTs, right? So now it gets even more complicated. Um, so one thing you need to know, there are regulations for selling crypto. Some countries it's illegal, some countries it's not. Some countries it's regulated, some countries it's not. From the time you say, I want to, I want to make an NFT, like Clay tonight was talking about his tomato photos. He wants to make an NFT of his tomato photos. Let's say tomorrow he wants to make this NFT. He can't do it. And the reason is he has to get ETH. He has to set up a wallet. And that is going to take time. You can't do it in a day. It takes usually about a month or two, depending on your bank. There are banking regulations, right? So what you have to do is you have to start the process. You have to go. Like I try, I, I went to OpenSea and I made an account. I thought, okay, great, I'm on OpenSea, woohoo. Nope, you gotta have a wallet. Okay, how do I get a wallet? Well, MetaMask. Okay, great, woohoo, I'm on MetaMask. Nope, <laughs> you gotta go in Texas, you can't join MetaMask. So I had to go to a place called Coinbase, which is, if you've been to the grocery store, you know where, they, where you put the coins in and they give you dollars, that's the company, that, that company is called Coinbase. They have a website that allows you to, to crypto your money. 
So what I had to do was go to Coinbase, register with Coinbase, give them money, US dollars. They convert it to ETH and, and register me as, as a crypto trader. And that process takes about a month. Then you, you set up your wallet at MetaMask and you transfer your ETH from Coinbase to MetaMask. Then you have your wallet, your MetaMask wallet with your ETH in it. Then you go to OpenSea and you have to pay a gas fee before you can sell your NFTs. <laughs> so boy, isn't that like a convoluted Texas two-step. <laughs> so the whole process takes a month or two and can take like, again, I'm gonna tell you one to $200, but that depends on the price. It's in ETH, it's not in dollars, right? So know that when gas is low, ETH is low, it might be more towards $100. If gas is high, ETH, ETH is high, it might be more, right? Cause you're gonna do it in ETH, right? So know that you're gonna give Coinbase money, but, and you're gonna give them dollars, but OpenSea is gonna take money in ETH. Carol. Uh, yes. I trend, I opened an account with Coinbase, transferred my uh, money there, funds from my bank. Uh, mm -hmm. It was done in five minutes and I headed there and I could trade whatever I wanted through Coinbase. You And that's another thing you can do. You can trade, Coinbase now has a wallet, right? But I prefer MetaMask. Okay. Um, and so in Coinbase wallet, see, again, this space is moving very quickly, right? When I signed up in January, Coinbase wallet was not fully functional. And Coinbase wallet had difficulty connecting to OpenSea. That may be okay. fixed now. I'm not sure, right? Okay. So it's one of those things you have to check. But Coinbase is a very reputable company. I will say that. And so is MetaMask, right? So um, that I'm walking you through the process that I did. It may be a lot smoother now, I'm not sure. But also know that they're adding regulations all the time. So next month, the government can come in and say, hey, we're not, Texas can come in and say, we're not allowing Coinbase, right? So it'll change again, mm -hmm. right? So the, the, the thing is you have to have a wallet connected to OpenSea and you have to have ETH in your wallet and you have to be set up to trade crypto, meaning get, you're not gonna trade crypto, you're just gonna convert dollars to ETH so you can mint your pieces. That's the process. So hopefully everybody understands that bit and know that the pieces that you, the websites you may go to, the wallets you may use could change, right? But you're going to have to do your own research because this changes by the day. Um, and like I said, I did it in January. Coinbase wasn't set up. I believe it's set up now. I can't say for sure. It's entirely possible. And maybe MetaMask is allowing people from Texas now. I'm not sure. Um, Good question. Is there yes, also question. a, is there a fee for minting? So there's a fee to set up originally with um, OpenSea. There's a one-time fee. There's a fee when you auction, but there's not a fee for minting with OpenSea. And that's gonna be different on every platform, right? So depending on your platform, some platforms charge you every time you mint, other platform, the reason OpenSea, one of the reasons OpenSea is very popular is because there's a flat fee. There's like a hundred bucks, whatever, 200 bucks. You pay them and then you only pay when you sell. And so that model is very popular for artists because you're not out a lot of money. Other platforms, they charge you every time you mint, but they when the work sells, it's a lot more money. You get a lot more ETH for your work. So what a lot of people do is they start on OpenSea, they start to get popular and then they move to another platform where they get more ETH for their work, but know that that means when you mint, you're gonna to have to pay, right? So it's gonna vary by platform. I wish I could give you a better answer, but that it, it, this is really decentralized. So everything is gonna depend on where you go and what you do. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, the Coinbase to MetaMask to OpenSea shuffle, maybe just Coinbase to OpenSea shuffle now. I hope that's the case because it's really confusing. Um, basically, part of setting up the wallet, you're going to get a, 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 a phrase. It's going to be 12 words. And this is very important. They tell you you should write your words down like on a sheet of paper. Don't put them on your computer. Don't put them on the internet and don't you know put them on a piece of paper and put them away. Do not give your 12 words out to anyone. You should, you should never give them out, keep them. 
right? That's one way to get it, your wallet, your encryption for your wallet, right? So keep those 12 words separate, secluded, do not, do not give them out, right? No one should ask you for those 12 words. If they're asking you for your 12 words, they're scamming you, right? So no, you should never give out your 12 words, right? Um, and so just keep that in mind. It, there is, it's very prone to a lot of scamming. I will say that unfortunately, it, again, because there's a lot of people made a lot of money very quickly. There's a lot of people, you know, unscrupulous people have jumped onto it and figured out all kinds of ways to try and scam people. Um, so I, we're, let's talk about gas, gas prices, gas fees. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so just like we said, when you traded your euros for dollars, the bank took a wee little fee. In NFTs, you pay gas fees. Right, and this is the cost of, of minting and auctioning. Right, so again, I, I say it here, some marketplaces like OpenSea charge a one-time setup. It's an ETH, so I can't give you a dollar amount. It's usually it's between one to $200, but it's gonna depend on the cost of ETH versus the dollar, which is really gonna fluctuate. And then the only, only charge when you sell items at auction, other marketplaces charge you every time you mint. It's gonna really depend on what your contract is and who your platform is. So let's talk about DAOs. Okay, so what's a DAO? OpenSea is getting very crowded. There's a lot of artists on it. And it's getting very hard to become noticed. So artists have gotten to started to say, let's sell in a DAO. A DAO stands for a decentralized autonomous organization. I'm never gonna say that again. Basically think of a DAO as a gallery. In the old days, you wanted to sell your photographic prints, you went to a gallery, the gallery sold the prints, and, and even if they took a commission, right, great, they sold the prints, right? It's the same principle. They set up websites and they promote the work and, and they do charge a, a high fee. They, they get those gas fees, they're up high. Some of them get a lot of money in gas fees, but they sell work for a lot of money. There's a website called Super Rare. They sell stuff for like, I mean, the ETH prices are like 20 ETH, 30 ETH for a photo. Ethereum right now is $2,000. So multiply 30 by $2,000, but they get half of it. But look at how much money you're getting if you sell, right? So some people may say it's just like a gallery. They may take 50, 60% commission, right? But they're getting the prices. So some people may decide, hey, I want to sell through the gallery because even though they're getting a huge commission, they're selling my work for a lot more money. They have buyers lined up and they know how to sell. It's the same thing, the DAOs, they're able to, to sell, they have the client base. And so sometimes getting into the DAO means your work will get sold. There are DAOs that are specialists, right? There are DAOs that specialize in African art, women art, you know, women photographers, photography in general, nature photography, right? So it might be a really good idea to start minting NFTs and really try to get into a good DAO for sales, right? Rather than trying to sell them yourself. And in fact, that's really what I, I've been working on. Um, I really want to get into a, a DAO that I can feel comfortable with and sell, let them sort of do more of the selling versus me trying to, to sell. And I'll talk about selling a little bit too. How are we doing on time? I hope everybody, this is, hopefully it is a good discussion. Um, so I mentioned that everything is very speculative. The prices, the gas prices rise and fall. You will see people, if you go on Twitter and you start following like hashtag NFT, hashtag NFT community, hashtag photography even, you'll see people, gas is cheap, mint now, here's my NFT for sale. <laughs> gas is cheap, yay, go buy stuff, right? Right after I signed up for OpenSea, it was hacked and they lost reportedly $1.7 million in a couple of days. Hacked, they just hacked in the whole thing. Um, there are many stories of people getting hacked. We talked about some, you know, keep your word safe and your wallet safe. Um, so again, let's talk about ways you can make money with your work in the NFT space, right? Because some of them may not be obvious. We talked about minting your photos as NFTs and auctioning them, right? That's one way to do it. You can just sell, you can say, my bottle of water, I'm going to take a photo and I'm going to mint it. I'm going to sell it for 20 ETH. I'm going to make 20 times $2,000 whatever that is, I get to keep it. I get to pay that. I've got to pay the gas fee, I pay taxes, don't forget taxes. Um, that's it, you know, I get to keep it. But one time, one edition, one, one, one change, one thing on the blockchain, right? One auction. 
A lot of people will trade crypto and park the ETH in the NFTs. That's very common. I mentioned that a lot of people are crypto traders. They buy Bitcoin, they buy ETH, they sell ETH. When they have money left over, they buy NFTs and they buy and sell the NFTs to get more crypto, to get less crypto, you know, whatever. Okay. Some people trade NFTs because they go up in value. As ETH goes up, the price of NFTs goes up, right? If you're if you sell your work for one ETH, right? If if ETH goes up, one ETH today and one ETH next week are different prices, right? Even if you sell it at one ETH, you're still making money, right? Because the price of crypto went up, the, 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 the dollar to euro fee went up, right? So that's another way to make money is you just buy stuff and hold it, wait a few months and then ETH goes up and you sell it again. Okay. It's basically trading it like a stock, right? I mentioned royalties, right? You can mint your photos cheap as NFTs, may, maybe mint them cheaper and then encourage people to buy and sell them more. And then every time that, that happens, you get a royalty, right? And if your work flips a lot, you get a lot of royalties. And if you keep minting work and you keep getting those royalties, that can really add up, right? So when something sold in, 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 in a secondary, they call it the secondary market, right? That's true even in galleries. Like for example, I've sold some work through galleries and then people bought it and resold it, right? That's called the secondary market. Right, so I, I have some people who bought some of my photos and then resold them, auctioned them, whatever. That's the secondary market, right? That's true also for NFTs. They call it the secondary market, right? So when, if you buy an NFT from me and then you turn around and flip it, it's sold on the secondary market, right? If I have royalties, I'm gonna get paid again. If not, my work still, it still helps me because my work may become more valuable as the secondary market price grows of it. My original work may become more valuable. Right, so that's not always clear, but hopefully that makes sense. Um, over time, your art, your reputation as an artist may grow and then that will raise your prices, right? You can associate utilities with an NFT, right? You can mint your, off, mint your NFT and offer a print. You can offer a book. You can offer a service, right? You can say, I'll do a family portrait if you win my, if you buy this at auction, right? There's lots of ways, lots of things you can get creative. There are collaborations, right? There are people doing poetry, songs, you can, you can partner with a musician and say, we're going to mint an NFT. It's going to be a photo and a song. Someone buys it, they get to hear the song and they get to see the photo. Something you can do, right? Um, you, it, there's really no limit. Um, it's how creative you want to get and whatever you can put on the blockchain and whatever people will buy at auction. That's the limits. That's it. Um, okay, so let's talk about selling. So NFTs really have their own language. <laughs> Um, they don't say selling NFTs or auctioning even, they call it shilling. I don't know why that's a word they use. Most shilling is done on Twitter. Twitter is the NFT capital of the universe. There are some people now that have started using Discord in addition to Twitter because it allows you to talk more without posting. Again, I mentioned this space is moving really fast. Instagram recently announced that they're getting into NFT space, big time. They're gonna, they're gonna mint for you, they're gonna auction and everything. But there's a big cost. They're taking a 50% commission on their NFTs, right? So a lot of people are saying, you know, Instagram is dying, it's dead, whatever. It may be dead, it may not be dead, I don't know. I don't know how many people are gonna actually sell on, on Instagram given their 50% commission. Personally, and again, this is my opinion. So I'm trying to separate the facts from opinion here. So I'm going to give you opinion flag coming, right? I am less inclined to go with Instagram and take a 50% commission. I am much more inclined to get into a DAO of like-minded artists and try to sell my work that way. That's just how I feel as an artist. Um, you will have to make that decision for yourself if you're interested in selling NFTs, buying, selling, trading NFTs. Do you want to just put it on Instagram and, and let them take a big chunk of your profits? Or do you want to try and get into a DAO? Like maybe if you're a nature photographer, get in a nature photographer DAO and have it be like a little specialized group of people that all promote their work and share and, and grow over time. For me, the second option is way more preferable. That's what I'm looking to do. But that's my opinion. Again, I'm really giving my opinion here. Um, if you want to go the Instagram route, certainly they're going to they're gonna add that. And I'll, I'll lower my opinion flag now. Um, I gave you my opinion on that. Twitter spaces. Oh, yes, question. Go ahead, Clay. I don't want to, I was just ruminating in terms of DAO. Is mm -hmm. this like a, is this like a guild uh, where, 
where um, you know you maybe get entered as an apprentice and um, for your work, and then um, uh, she's, and I was <laughs> can 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 our club create a create a DAO and market yeah, we could. a market yeah, we could. our our photographers, you know. Yeah, we could. Um, really think of it DAO as almost like a website. Um, it's it's oh, a it's a okay. collection of people that get together and and mint together and auction together. Um, it's it's more than a website. I shouldn't say it's a website. Um, that's actually a bad example. But it's think of it as um, you know, like I said, the nature photographers got together and started a DAO, right? So you you can start a DAO with two, three, four, five, six people. You can start a DAO with a thousand people, right? There's some really big ones. There's some really smaller ones. Right. Um, there are some that's very specialized, right? They specialize in women, they specialize in African art, they specialize in painters, they specialize in photographers only. Right. There are other DAOs that are more, you know, open, right? They just take anything. Um, Super Rare is one that, you know, it's a it's a platform, but it's also really a DAO, right? And a lot of them are by portfolio review, so they're very hard to get into. Right. So it is a lot harder to get into some of them, but they get the ETH, they get the, they get the money, right? So it's almost, think of a DAO as a gallery, right? So just like a gallery, you can open your own gallery. You can, op you can say, hey, we're gonna get two people together, open a DAO, right? You can get a hundred people together, open a DAO. Yes, the photo group could open a DAO. If you wanted, we could, right? Yeah. Fine, I'm not suggesting that seriously, but I'm just trying to draw out the ideas. I, I've thought about this a lot and that the photo group has a lot of people and we really should think about maybe trying to do when we market, try to market more as a group, right? Mm -hmm. and, and really become a force. Um, one thing we can do is on Twitter, the hashtags, the like NFT community, NFTs, photography hashtags really are it. Um, Twitter is much more, the hashtags move very quickly again. So if a bunch of us were all in the NFT space and we were all retweeting each other's work, um, that would promote all of our work. So again, that would, that a rising tide does lift all boats, right? So if we were all in the NFT space and we were all promoting each other's work, we would really dominate, it would, it would help sales for everybody across the board, right? Another thing that happens, and this is what the group really should think about doing also, Twitter spaces, I don't know if you've seen, Twitter has this thing called spaces where it's like a room that you can go in and talk. Twitter spaces are really where NFTs get bought and sold. So what happens is you, you go to OpenSea, you make your NFT, you get a link. You go to Twitter, you make a pinned post where you put a photo of your, of your NFTs and a link to your OpenSea. And then you go into a space and you talk with other artists and people who buy and you shill. You say, here's my work. You know, here's what I do. I'm, you know, in my case, I have Bourbon Street at night. I go in and say, I got my Bourbon Street at night. I shot New Orleans. I'm a photographer. I won these kind of awards. Here's my work, you know, and people see it. They either they follow me or they buy my work, right? And that's how this works. It's a lot of it is going into spaces. Another thing that happens is it's a big community, right? I mentioned it's a big community. So what happens is a lot of people will retweet. When you go into a space and you start talking, usually they pin your, your pin tweet. They put it up people will retweet that, right? So as people retweet it, your influence will grow. You'll have more of a, more people will see your work. You also retweet other people's work, right? So if you look at my Twitter feed, I, I share other people's work all the time. They share mine, right? My Twitter, when I first, a, a year or two ago, I maybe had 400 followers on Twitter. And now I think I'm up to 1400. It's growing all the time. Again, it's growing really fast. Right. And what's happening is as I share work, more people are following me, more people are sharing my work, my work's getting out more, you know, even if I don't sell NFTs, more people are seeing my work than ever before, right? Because that community is growing and it's really, and it's, and I'm able to share work, I'm able to see work and people are sharing my work and seeing my work. And what's happening now is the spaces are getting so popular because so many people have made so much money. Again, the apes are gone crazy. What's happened is it's gotten very hard to even talk in a space that we were just talking about this. I was in a space this week and somebody was talking about it and they said, there's now mega spaces where there's like 300 people and everybody's trying to sell and they're fighting to get up to the top. Because usually they only let, they have 10 speakers and they rotate the speakers and it can be hard to become a speaker 
because these spaces are so big and they're overrun with so many people trying to sell work. Right, so what the photo group might wanna do is actually start having our own space, right? Where we say every Thursday night or whatever, we have a photo space and we just talk about photography and we run it. You know, we just say, okay, we're gonna run the space. You know, whoever's, we run it and we let a few people join. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I like what you're, I like where you're going. I was also wanting to uh, ask you for maybe one or two examples of spaces. How do you find a space doing this is you have to search with keywords or no 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 so so what you do is people will hold spaces so as you follow people they, they'll have spaces and then one of the things they do is when when you spaces is a new thing on twitter too by the way it's still kind of buggy but once when, when you know when someone you know hosts a space when you log on it'll show you like let me see if i can actually show you what it shows me right i don't know if you can see it um here, see on the top of my Twitter, those are the spaces that the people I follow are you're having just, right now. Oh, you're right. holding it. You're holding up something on your cell phone. Okay, I yes. thought you were sharing. See my cell screen. phone. Can you yeah. see my cell phone? See the top of my feed on on Twitter, right? Has spaces, and and it's the people that I follow. That's the spaces that they're having right now, right? So if I look at it, like it's telling me, um, like I'm just going to click on one, right? It says. Scribe AMA with Dave and KT, create community engagement, right? AMA is Ask Me Anything, right? So this is a Scribe Ask Me Anything with Dave and KT. I don't know who those people are. It's a, it's a cryptocurrency NFT digital creator space. That's what it says. I don't, I don't know who these people are. Okay. Um, I probably follow one of them. They probably follow me, right? They're having a space. So I would click and join and just, you hit start listening and you go into the space. So let me see if I can... Um, there's one right now called We're All Strange Here, right? If I click on it, it's, it's just as we're all strange here. It's, it's, it looks like artists. Um, chilling in crypto, happy hour, right? There's one, you know, game night. Um, <laughs> not okay bears, right? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is all, you know, NFT mint party. That's another thing. A lot of people will have a space when they're about to mint something. Right. When they're about to do a new drop, they'll say, hey, I'm going to have a space and they host a space. Right. So a lot of this happens on Twitter spaces. So what I would recommend if you're starting with your wallet, if you're in that month long period, is you, 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 you know, get your wallet set up. And if you're waiting, if you have a waiting period, start going on Twitter, start hanging out in spaces, start checking out the hashtags and listen to some of the people. It's, it's really interesting to hear some of the stuff. Um, it, to get into the community. It's really, really, very fascinating. Do you have yeah, more I just, slides? I just got, a, just got a one uh, spaces and it, all it is, all I see is advertising how to get into it. So the space, you click on the space and then it'll say, start listening. And then you click on that and it'll take you into the space and then you'll hear it and you can talk. But normally you're not allowed to be a speaker. You have to be a listener. And then you have to like raise your hand and say, hey, I want to speak. And then they'll promote you to speaker. And so it's, it's a very odd, um, you have to enable your Twitter feed for spaces too. I think it's, it's, it's very buggy. Um, and know that some of these spaces, like I've been in spaces sometimes for hours and they won't let people speak again because there's hundreds of people that are looking to sell stuff. Um, and so, I've gone in some spaces where I've gotten, you know, it's terrible. Sometimes they're rotten. Like I go in and they talk about, I was in one and like for two hours, all they did was talk about LA and I was ready to like choke somebody. And like, LA, oh, you're from LA. Oh, I'm from LA, 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 LA. And I was just like, shut up. <laughs> they were really just driving me crazy. I'm sorry, but they were just driving me nuts. Like this is supposed to be a photo space. Talk about photos, it's stupid people. But then also, for those of you who know, if you're familiar with Flack Photo, there's a guy named Andy Adams, who's an excellent photographer. He hosted a space and he's never done spaces. He's never done, he, he even talked about it. He said, I never talk, but he writes about photography. He's actually written journals and photo journals. And he's very, he's, he's a judge for Photo Lucida and Photo Fest in Houston. Um, he's, he's really prominent in the photo community. And he hosted a great space. I mean, it was phenomenal. He interviewed one photographer that was really good. 
Um, and they just talked about a lot of photography, a lot about the work, a lot. And it was just, it was an hour that I was like, this is probably one of the better times, one hour about photography that I treasure. Um, so for every like hour or two hours, I have to listen to, LA, 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 I get to hear, you know, Andy talk about photography. So it's a mixed bag. And I would say, try out a space. If, if you can't stand it, just drop, you know, just dump. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to tell you. That, that, that's how it, it's very decentralized. It's very wild west. Anybody can start a space. Um, some people shouldn't and they do anyway. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, that's how it works. Well, so, maybe, one of our, maybe one of our other members will take that up as a challenge to investigate this and create a space for our club. That way yeah, we should, we could do it. We could do a space like, you know, usually they do like they, they recommend you try to do them the same time every week or something, you know, sort of thing. Right. So you, you hang out. There's one that's like on the weekends. I want to say it's Saturday or Sunday morning. That's it's photo based. It's very good too. I've been dumped in it a couple of times. Um, you know, sometimes I just see what spaces are on. I, when I'm on my exercise bike or whatever, I'll jump in. Sometimes I've been in some that were terrible. Sometimes I've been in some that I'm like, wow, this wasn't even expected you know um they're really interesting and that's where a lot of the sales happens and a lot of times you get followers because even sometimes when you listen in a space people will start following all the other people in the space right so that's what happens too so you join a space and people start following you and you're like well who are these people but then you follow them back and then they pin your they retweet your tweet and you retweet their tweet and then before you know it people are looking at your work I, I posted a tweet the other day and I got 1500 people look at it because someone retweeted it from a space, right? So, you know, you, yeah, okay. Oh, wow. It's really, I, I'm at the point now where I'm getting people, when I post something on Twitter, I get five or six people instantly like it and retweet it. So I'm starting to get that community. I'm not up where I need to be, but it's really starting to, to grow. It's a, it, you're working at it. That's clear um, from your, I am, intent, your yeah. intent, your intent and work is paying off and that's great to hear. Do you wanna say anything about um, Josh? If, if you talked with him ahead of time to, in terms of what he's interested in and in a way he's using, you know, Josh says mean things on YouTube is a weekly collection. And I think uh, Stephen is a regular on that and uh, others are, you know, regularly, you know, watch him and participate kind of creating a room, a space yeah, almost, yeah. except it's not Twitter, it's YouTube. But yeah, tell us if you had any comments from Josh. I'm sorry he's not here. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, for me, like Josh really just looked at the slides and he kind of just said, yeah, go, go ahead. Um, he, he is on OpenSea. He has some images up and he's minted a few images. Um, again, this stuff is really new. So a lot of folks are, it, it is really just a new, new phenomenon, right? So a lot of this is, and it, there's a lot of bits and bolts that you have to connect, right? Because if you could just start selling NFTs, but you don't know that Twitter is the place where you go to sell them, right? Or you could just start on Twitter and not realize that, oh, everybody's selling NFTs and not know that you need to go to Coinbase, MetaMask, OpenSea, whatever, right? It, it's, it's hard to put all these pieces together, right? So that's the other piece of this. And I've been working on this for a while and I've connected a lot of these dots and it, it's not obvious, and I'm still connecting dots. <laughs> so um, it sounds like a continuous process, and 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 fun if you take it with the right attitude. Uh, I am learning so much because the thing is, the art of shilling is really. I'm applying it also to my Web 2.0 because you know I have a I have a website. You have so your store. Actually, I'm learning how to sell, and I'm learning how to engage and how to build a community because one of the things that happens is the space. It, it is so fast. Right. I started in January. I've already in this, I'm already have an audience, you know, a community build, building up. Right. So I'm seeing how it's done and I'm trying to take some of it back to the web 2.0 and actually do the same thing with my prints. So that's another piece of this is that, you know, I'm trying to, I'm learning, I'm taking some of the learnings and pulling it back to my other little hovels, right? Like my prints and my email list. Right. So my email list has been growing it's doubled since probably the last time I've seen some folks, right? And that, that part of that is because I'm learning how to do this. You know, I was never trained as a business person. So it's, it's different for me growing a photo business. It's very different, right? Because my, my training is computers and, and photography stuff, but not really, you know, um, business side of, of the house, right? So little different. Um, so anyway, I know it's getting late. I'm probably, um, I should, 
should yeah, wrap up. I was, is this the last slide or, or do you? Um, I'll, I'll go very quickly. I'll, I'll try to wrap okay. up. I don't um, want you to leave something important that you've worked hard on. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me, um, so, so I, most of it, I think we've mentioned. Um, so basically the way Twitter works is you put it, you pin a tweet with a collage of your collection and a link to your OpenSea auction. And then you go into spaces and you talk up your work and you share your pinned tweet. And if people are, who buy NFTs are called collectors or whales. They buy a lot. They, a lot of times whales will come online. They'll buy like everything that's for sale. Hmm. And you really you retweet to share other people's work. And it really, the sense of community is amazing. Um, I mentioned that artists are collectors. People are buying and selling collector. Whales will come in a lot. Um, the community is really, really strong. I mentioned the wag me. We're all going to make it. That's what people say a lot. You'll see it, wag me, wag me, wag me. We're going to make it. I'm, I'm even starting using that word in my everyday talk. We're all going to make it, going to make it. You know, that's, that's, our, that's our say. So I'm coming really to the end now. So these are some of the terms. I'll just go over these really quickly. So an ape is somebody who invests in NFTs a lot or is generally all in on a project, very successful kind of thing. Burn, when you burn something, that means you remove it from the blockchain or you remove the tokens from circulation, right? So it, you end the auction, you remove the thing. It, that's the, the opposite of minting, right? It's when you burn it. So a cold wallet is an offline wallet store. That could be like a paper thing that you write down. or you know, it's, it's basically it's offline. A hot wallet is something online like MetaMask, Coinbase, right? That, those are some of the words you'll hear. Um, fiat refers to a currency that's established legal tender has basically as a country backing it like, or a government like a euro is still a fiat currency right so that's basically something that's regulated by a government not like the blockchain that's deregulated so fomo means fear of missing out so gas we talked about gas those are the fees paid right um and that depends on how complex the auction is as well as the demand on the network Genesis, you hear people say my Genesis, right? What that means is the very first thing you mint or the first collection you put up is referred to as your Genesis collection, right? So that's the first thing you mint is called your Genesis. GM is short for good morning. You also see GN, good night. A lot of times on Twitter, people will do a GM thread uh, where they show off a piece of art and they say, good morning, friends, here's, you know, happy day, whatever. And that's a lot of times your good morning thread gets retweeted a lot. For those of you who follow me, I've been, I've been joking on Elon Musk <laughs> and I've been talking about how I don't have a foundation invite. Um, those are my two things I've been saying every day for the past couple months. And, and I get people joking on it too. It's, it's kind of my, my riff. Um, today I put up a picture of a pumpkin and I said, Gord morning. I don't know if Elon Musk likes pumpkins. Foundation's open, woohoo. You know. Kind of thing so um but i do a, i try to do a good morning thread every day gmi ngmi w wag me gonna make it not gonna make it or we're all gonna make it so you, you will hear people say not gonna make it you know like if your car dies or something um they these terms will stay with me i think forever it'll be from my days of nfts um HFSP, have fun staying poor. This is usually refers to someone who doesn't want to buy a project or someone who thinks, occasionally someone will go on Twitter and be like, this NFT stuff is all stupid. You people are just selling JPEGs and someone will come back and go, have fun staying poor. Hold, spelled H-O-D-L, means hold on for dear life. Usually that means the project is going to go way up in value or people think it's going to get more valuable. So everyone's holding on, right? Uh, metaverse. Now, this is a this is an I put the term here, but basically what it means is it's like a virtual world that people live in, and some people buy NFTs to put in the virtual world. Um, for those of you who know, Facebook recently changed its name to Meta. They're really buying all in on this metaverse. Um, there's people who are buying online spaces. They're moving into the metaverse and they're buying NFTs to go with this metaverse thing. So know that that's another. You know, there's the crypto traders, the artists, and the meta people are all in this NFT business. Profile picture or PFP, that's just, I mentioned some people use their profile picture. Um, rugged, I have to mention rug. So rugged, rug pull or, or rug basically means if you get dropped, if, 
I mentioned the spaces are really buggy. So sometimes they'll just drop you out. You'll just get dropped. So that's called getting rugged. So there's even a space called rug radio. <laughs> um, you'll hear people say, I was rugged, I was rugged, I was rugged. What that means is you got dropped, you got scammed, you got disconnected. You know, um, I use that word a lot now. I use it with Zoom. I say, oh, I hope Zoom doesn't rug me. You know, it's, it's, it's snuck into my regular vocabulary. And YOLO, you only live once. That's the YOLO and the FOMO are very different, right? The YOLO people like Elon Musk is the YOLO guy. Like he just goes all out, just, and the FOMO are the people that usually play catch up, right? They're, they don't want to miss something. So they buy in as opposed to the people that are sort of the brazen and bold and just go. Um, that's really all I had. I'm sorry. I, I probably talked everyone's ears off. Um, I will open it up for questions and comments and who here is going to mint NFTs at this point? <laughs> Did okay. I scare somebody away? Why, why don't you stop sharing unless you have a share? Sure. Do you sure. have a slide with some, any chance or? No. I if there's, not. we'll just go to your website. We'll go to your website <laughs> and follow some of your things on the website. Yeah, and let me check the chat room too to make sure I got everybody's questions. I haven't seen anything new. And uh, yeah, Char, uh, Stephen, maybe you, maybe you will get into this. How do you get on Ethereum? I think you did cover that quite a while ago. Yeah, uh, thanks for following through that process. Yeah, and it's a multi-step process. And as you said, it's, it can be complex to get through all the steps. So you need, it's not an instant sort of thing. It, yeah, it can, not yet. it can take a while. It can, it, and they're working on, you know, again, they're working on making it faster, but they're also working on regulating it. So that means it may, it may this stuff could all become illegal tomorrow. Um, it, it was I mean, really, it is changing that much. Like I was going to tell you, like there's three basic platforms. Like there's OpenSea, Foundation, and Super Rare, right? So OpenSea is open; anyone can just join. Foundation usually you have to get an invite from another artist, right? And it's a little harder to get on, but you can still get on. And then Super Rare is very hard to get on. You have to apply. They really have to take you in. It's very difficult. Most people get rejected. Well, this week Foundation just opened up and said, "No, we're going to let anybody join." Right, so now it's it's totally different. Um, the folks who started um, Flickr also started a company called 500px. They have started a DAO, and so that's another one that a lot of people. But again, it, you have to apply to it, and so you have to apply to the DAO. And the, part of the application is you have to list like your collectors, so you have to sell NFTs before you get into their DAO. So that's another thing. It's like it's not it's not instant. It's not you know you have to. It's really all about building relationships and being part of the community and then also selling. And like for, for me, one of the mistakes I made was my price is a little weird. So I'm now struggling with, do I try to offer a low, like a, a low item, very cheap and try to build up my collectors. But then that hurts my stuff that's already for sale because you don't want to undercut collectors, right? So, or do I try to shill more and try to sell what I have at the price I have? You know, it's very tricky pricing this stuff, right? And then on top of this, the Ethereum swings wildly, right? So it really becomes, you know, um, you don't know what to do sometimes. It's like, yeah, some people will tell you you're too high, you're too low, you're, you know, I, you know, I don't are know what to do. Are the works that you're um, using for, um, for NFTs apart and different from the ones you put on your store where you can have it on a coffee mug or have it framed or uh, et cetera? Are you so, going to have, so they could order through your store and buy it at that set price, you know, where you've set that price, that's my price, it's, you know, retail price. And uh, you're not, and, and then maybe there's another NFT that you've done differently. So when you mint on OpenSea, they want you to, they, you can provide a link to a website. Hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm actually linking to my website. So I'm putting stuff on my website and then I'm minting it. I'm not minting everything that's on my website though. I have probably a couple hundred, maybe I have 200 photos on my website. I'm yeah, not sure. You have a, yeah. Thank you. Um, and I, I don't have that many NFTs yet, right? So I'm being more selective about NFTs, um, at least for now until I get the DAO thing straight. And, you know, I'm, I'm still working through a lot of this myself, right? So what I'm doing, but what I am doing is because when you do mint, it's easier if you have a website, you have a link. 
So mm -hmm. I am minting the pieces that I've already launched on my website. Um, I haven't, I, I'm thinking about minting some stuff where I offer a print because that seems to be, um, and you'll hear people say, um, you know, you have to have utility, right? Meaning you have to put a print or you have to put something with it, right? Some people say, you won't sell unless you have utility. I don't know if that's true. I see people selling without utility all the time. Really, in order to sell, you have to have somebody who's willing to buy, yeah. right? And a lot of times that means you have to have a community. So you really have to build up the relationships and the community. So it really may be a question of going into the discords, talking to people, doing those good morning tweets every day, building up the community, going into spaces as much as you can, and just talking up your work if you can. Um, your elevator speech is really important because a lot of times you get into a space and you only have a minute or two to talk, right? So, and the other thing is if you're with other artists, if you know other artists, just a retweet can really help people. So if you're on Twitter, retweet my work, I'll retweet your work. It really is what will make it because Twitter hashtags work very differently from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook really cure and Instagram really curates what you see. Right, so certain, ha so certain people's work comes to the top of your feed all the time and other people you never see. Twitter is very different, it's chronological and so it's constantly, it moves very fast. So if you go look at like pound photography on Twitter, it's constantly moving every second, there's millions of, you know, everyone's posting to it, right? So you only get a few seconds on that hashtag that you own it, right? So if, if like, let's say I post something with hashtag pound photography, and you come in and you retweet it, right? That doubles my time at that hashtag. That doubles my time that someone's likely to see me. That doubles my time that somebody may buy my NFT, mm -hmm. right? So if that's why the community is so important because if you get a hundred people retweeting your stuff, you're much more likely to be in that hashtag for a longer time. You're way more likely to have a whale or a collector spot you and buy your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the idea is you retweet as much as you can. There's people have told me like, just retweet a hundred times a day and your stuff will sell. You don't even need to pimp your own stuff. You don't even need to promote, your, you don't have to shill. You just have to retweet and then people will retweet your stuff. The mm -hmm. idea is you do that pin tweet of your work and you pin it to your profile on Twitter and then you retweet and someone will then come along and retweet your pin tweet. So it's that community that and, and it's talking and, and talking up the work. Got it. Um, okay, well, gosh, uh, Carol, it's nine o'clock. Yeah, we, we should get going. You have you have maintained our interest solidly for the 10 or 11, we had 11 people and, oh. and the recording is going to spread your uh, fame more, I hope with Ed <laughs> keeping the recording. And um, I suppose unless uh, we, uh, again, let's, uh, uh, we, the deadline for the next month of competition is passed, but you do have the rainbow theme coming up in July. Uh, Bill has said we have a June speaker Right, David, Bill? David Akubian. David oh. Akubian, he put the, he put our, uh, we'll get some more information out on that, but his website was posted in the chat and I've got it. And um, uh, plan on, on uh, printing some of your images so you can enter them in the Round Rock uh, Annex uh, coming up. May 31st is uh, the, the deadline for that. You need to send an image to, uh, Jose Rios or Robert Rios, our member, uh, and uh, watch for more emails from him about that as the deadline gets closer. You can ask questions to him. Um, okay, anything else um, for the good of the of the story and the space? <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Very again, Carol. Thank you, Carol. Let's thank Carol. Wave to Carol. <laughs> yeah, if anybody has any questions, you think of anything, just hit me up. I'd be happy to, you know, answer. Wow. If I can. For, for something as complex as this, you've simplified it a great deal and our minds are blown. <laughs> Even, <laughs> and, and I it's think- It's a lot. So, so, <laughs> so, so sorry it was so intense, but hopefully, I uh, hope you all are enthused. No, it was- Absolutely, absolutely, and and for me, it's a it's an in depth exposure I haven't had before. The Wikipedia article link uh, had had some good stuff too that I included in the, in the thing. And yeah, if you think of any um, reference, we'll follow, I'm going to start following your Twitter. I've been following <laughs> Twitter feeds very much, so that I will do. And I recommend for everyone to follow Carol. 
uh, and um, she posts regularly on Facebook as well. Yep. So, okay, Ed, anything you want to say, Ed? Oh, um, I, I will say I'm not going to be able to work on the recording for a couple of days, but I'll have it early next week. Okay, very good. Worries. Well, thank you for recording. You can end the recording and we'll end the meeting now. So thank you everyone for your- Take care. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.